what should we make of Tony Evans stepping down? Nothing. Full disclosure, Dr. Tony Evans used to be my pastor. I used to go to Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Love the church, love the people. Is it a perfect church? No. If you can find a perfect church, then let me know so we can all go there. But at present, we don't have a perfect church. What you will learn to admire about him is that he's faithful to his flock. He's not out all over the country. Now, he'll go different places and visit and do different things, but he's faithful to his church. He spends a lot of time, at least then, especially when he was younger, he was there every Sunday and he would take a break for one month out of the year, usually in August, and go someplace. Now, sometimes also he would go different places, such as a trip to Israel and things like that. But usually you'll find him at the church throughout the week and certainly on Sundays taking care of the flock. Now, he just, his wife Lois, Dr. Lois Evans, passed away uh, a few years ago, and he recently got married, and which was fine. Some folks wanted to make a little bit of a scandal, but there was nothing wrong with him. He could marry who he wanted to, and he married another woman who also lost her husband uh, around the same time, actually incidentally went to uh, Dr. Evans's funeral. So there's nothing wrong with that. Now, there's something that came out where he makes an announcement yesterday to the church And I think people are going to want to make more out of, he said, his reasons for stepping down for sin. Let's go ahead and I'm going to read the the statement for you. Uh, It says, now this is a statement. He says, it has been my glorious uh, joy and privilege to serve as your senior pastor over the past 48 years. I praise God for for forgiving me the opportunity and willingness in his hand of power and blessing that took 10 people in a house and brought us to where we are. This journey has filled uh, been filled with multitudes of joy and sorrow, successes and failures, mountains and valleys, but God has always been there to see us through. None of this would have been possible without the love, support of my family, our great team, and our leaders, staff, and kingdom servants who have supported me through the years. The foundation of this ministry has always been our commitment to the Word of God as absolute supreme standard of truth to which we are to confirm our lives. When we fall short of the standard due to sin, we are required to repent and restore our relationship with God. A number of years ago, I fell short of that standard. Now, I want to just pause right there for a second. Whatever the issue is, he said this happened some time ago. This is why I think he might he, he should be commended for whatever the sin. We don't know what it is. People are going to speculate. I would say don't speculate because you don't have reason or ground to speculate, though some will. But he says not, not, he didn't break, break any crimes. So who knows what it was? It, I mean, there's billions of different sins you could do. So let's just leave it at leave it at that. But the honorable thing to do was he to come forward and say, you know what, I need to fix this, uh, even though this is in the past, some years ago. Because let's be honest, most people with there was a sin will just, yeah, you know what, that was in the past. I'm definitely past it now, and let's move on out of sight, out of mind. No one knows about it, and let's continue. But the honorable thing to do, uh, and even if he was required to do so or not, I'll leave that because who knows what it is. But to do so, that speaks volumes. And so continuing what he said, he said, this was something that happened a number of years ago. I fell short of that standard. I am therefore required to apply the same biblical standard of repentance and restoration to myself that I have applied to others. I have shared this with my wife, my children and others and other church elders. And they have lovingly placed their arms and, and of grace around me while I have committed no crime. I did not use righteousness, judge, righteous judgment in my actions. In light of this, I am stepping away for, uh, from my pastoral doodles, duties and am submitting to a healing and restoration process established by the elders. This will afford me a needed time of spiritual recovery. During this time, it is critical to the ministry of OCBF, of the Bible Fellowship, continues as, as, a, as vibrantly as ever. Remember, you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, not a man. So, it says, Pastor Gibbons... Uh, Gibson, I'm sorry, and our leadership will keep you informed on how things will continue. So let's just leave it at that. Now, here's what the Bible says about a pastor. There are qualifications of a pastor. It says that he he must be above reproach. I think that says a lot to just to go and go to this point to where you say, you know what, I did something. You don't know about it. It happened some time ago. And then to say, you know what, I need to step away and just deal with that because maybe it might still be present. Don't know. He says, but it must be uh, above reproach. The husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable able to teach. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. Now, I don't know what it is. I, I have no idea, so I can't I can't speculate. But concerning the elders, he says the elders who rule are uh, well are to be considered worthy of double honor. He has he has deserved he deserves honor. He really does, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. For the scripture says you should not muzzle the ox while he's threshing and the labor is worthy of his wages. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except on the basis of two or three witnesses. I don't know if this is accusation from someone else. 
but maybe something that he brought up. Who knows? Maybe someone else confronted him. Again, we don't know. Those who continue in sin rebuke in the presence of all so that the rest will also be fearful of sinning. So pastors have a higher standard. And if they're caught in sin, they should be rebuked before all. But that's not that's necessarily the case that happened here. And so James tells us that if anyone wants to be a teacher or a pastor, pastor, teacher, uh, they will incur a stricter judgment. But in this case, if you recognize that and you move back, you know what? I've got to deal with me and myself because, again, there's not one person in the Bible that would not have to have some sort of discipline uh, against them for sin. Not one person except for Jesus. And for him to come up, come forward and say this, that speaks a lot. So I will say and caution everyone, do not get too caught up in what he did. If it comes out, then fine. We, we deal with that. But this is our brother in the Lord. And so I pray that everything, matter of fact, as a former member of his, pray that uh, that whatever happened, uh, it's past him, that there's healing, that there's also restoration. Galatians 6 says, if anyone is caught in a trespass or some sort of sin, transgression, then we who are spiritual are to restore such a one. You've got to consider yourself as well. Consider that you also have done some things. The difference is you're not in that position. And so to do that, that speaks volume because how many people with that large of a uh, church, that large, that large of a profile, people know you all over, literally all over the world would do the exact same thing. He's getting older. And so uh, he's getting close to the end of his ministry anyway. Who knows how long? Maybe he's got another, another 10 years, maybe another 20 years. Who, do, who knows? Thus far, it's been a pretty good run. Now, has he had some things that we disagree with or maybe some missteps? Everyone has. Everyone has. And so I value him as who he is. I value what he's done in the community, the church as well uh, for his being an example, because many of you all don't know this, especially here in this area of, of Texas, of Dallas. You've got a lot of black preachers. I don't want to make this about race, but a lot of black preachers who rather than um, giving the gospel as it is, as it stands, would much rather get up and hoop and holler and do these different tricks and so forth. Not him. He wants to focus on the word. If you disagree his, with his interpretation, that's fine. But he's at least going with the word to where you can at least have some way, some some basis for why you can disagree. Someone who's just making this up because of their emotions. You can't agree or disagree with the person's emotion, but at least you have the text. There are some things that you might like, some things you might like, not like, but this, how he's handled himself, you can't help but to like what he's done. And so let's pray for him, pray for the Church Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, uh, and that God will have glory in this. And more than, as he said, we're not following a man, we're following, if we are, we're following Christ. And so let's be mindful of that, but also be ready to um, give uh, a merciful and a gracious response because at some point in time, whatever's happening, you're going to need the exact same thing. Amen.